Hey guys, welcome to the second in a series of seven videos where we look at the derivations that you need to know for the advanced higher physics exam. In this video, we look at how to derive the second equation of motion, s equals ut plus a half at squared, from the rotational motion topic. So let's get into it. Just like the first equation of motion, v equals u plus at, the second equation of motion was also seen at higher level and then repeated again at advanced higher level. And you might be asked to derive it in the exam. So how do you do that? Well, what you want to do is start with the first equation of motion, v equals u plus at, which we derived in the previous video in this series. So that gives us v equals u plus at, but instead of just v, we can rewrite v is equal to ds by dt. And that's one of your equations on the relationship sheet which says that velocity is equal to the rate of change of displacement. So we've got v equals ds by dt, but we also know that v is equal to u plus at. So now we can say that ds by dt is equal to u plus at, and we can sort of just ignore this v on the left hand side now. And what we then want to do is integrate both sides with respect to time. So we have the integral of ds by dt, dt is equal to the integral of u plus at dt, where we need to integrate the whole of that right hand side, so we've put it in brackets here just to make sure you're going to integrate both parts. So technically we've got a velocity here which we're going to integrate with respect to time to just get displacement s, and then if we integrate this we get u times t plus at squared over 2, which is the same as a half at squared. So we have s from integrating this side is equal to ut from integrating this part, plus a half at squared from integrating this part, plus the constant c since we're integrating. And now similar to what we did to derive the first equation of motion, we're going to consider what happens to the equation here when time t is equal to zero, i.e. at the starting point. And this is also known as the initial conditions. So at a time t equals zero, the object hasn't started moving yet, so its displacement s must be equal to zero as well. And that means if we plug in t equals zero into this expression, we get s is equal to c since these two terms become zero. But we just said that s is equal to zero at t equals zero, so that means that c must also be equal to zero. Zero. And that means we can simplify this to just s equals ut plus a half at squared, which is our second equation of motion. So just a quick recap of that, you want to start with the first equation of motion, v equals u plus at, but you want to write it in terms of that equation from the relationship sheet, v equals ds by dt instead. So you have ds by dt is equal to u plus at, and then integrate both sides with respect to time. So if you do that, you end up with s equals ut plus a half at squared plus c, where c is your constant. And then you want to consider what happens when time t equals zero. So at time t equals zero, we say the displacement s of the object is zero, so therefore c is equal to zero, and that cancels out in this expression, which gives us s equals ut plus a half at squared. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.